praise the Lord. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 and a few other verses. It says in the, this verse here, he said unto me, and this is Paul speaking, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Praise the Lord. So it says, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, which cannot be uttered. In my final verse for today is, Let God arise, enemies be scattered, let them also that hate him flee before him. Amen. The thoughts on my heart this morning were really around allowing God to have his way. Amen. And letting God intervene. So let God intervene. Paul, in the first instance, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, gives us a testimony, really, of an experience he had. He was seeking God to take away a specific issue and problem from him. He didn't name what that issue was. He called it a thorn in his flesh. But he says, I prayed three times and nothing happened. And he was quite frustrated by this. But God spoke to him. Praise the Lord. And, and sometimes God doesn't always give us what we want. But it is important that he speaks to us um, in the midst of the, the troubles that we're having and the distresses. Um, he didn't give him an affirmative answer. So not every time God answers us, is it going to be yes, just because he answered, he might say no. And in this situation, the Lord said, no, I'm not moving that thing out of your life, but I'm giving you grace to deal with that. And there was a purpose for that thing remaining in his life. And so one of the requests I'm putting out here is that we will not stand in the way of what God actually wants to do. Sometimes we are, we are frustrated by the things that won't move. But the second point I've made here is that may we help have helped to understand the things that we can change and the things that we cannot change. All right. Um, it's a, it's kind of this distilled comment from a famous saying. I don't have the whole quote in my mind clearly. Um, but I think something about having the serenity to understand, you know, the things that we can change and the, and the peace to know, you know, when we can't change a thing, that we're not going to obsess about it. Imagine if you become completely obsessed about changing something that the Lord's not going to allow you to change. Um, you know, you can have a prayer request on something that is potentially against God's will for your life. Sometimes the things that are in your life are there for a season and they're there for a time. And they'll go when God's ready to move them or they, they may never go. He said to Paul, I'm leaving this here just in case you, you exhort yourself beyond what you should. You know, just to keep you at the place where you're humble. So sometimes uh, men of God, people of God are given thorns in the flesh. There are things that won't change. I, I think about I think about my father who prayed for many people, lay hands on many people. They get so much deliverance and healing. And, he, you know, his ears, he's still, you know, going deaf. And can't hear fully and needs a hearing aid. Sometimes you wonder, well, God, why have you, why have you left this man... With a, with a hearing problem and he's, he's had people healed from these things um, but sometimes in our life God just he just leaves some stuff there um, and so we want to know that you know God's going to give us the grace to get through things that we're not we're not going to become miserable about things that won't change um, there are things that won't change and there are things that won't change when you want them to change because they're on a time clock of God's purpose and not yours and so we want to understand um, where God is giving us grace to deal with things that we can't change, that we, we would not lose sleep over these things. So we want the grace I put here, grace would rest upon us to fulfill our purpose, enduring all this. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says we have, sorry, let me, before I move from that, he says also that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How many of us want the power of Christ to rest on us? Amen. We want God's 
power to rest Jesus. upon us. Amen. That's his power to get through situations. Paul says, then when he came to this understanding, he said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. So, so Paul's saying, I recognize now that um, it, if I got a problem and if I'm in a situation that I can't fix, it's opening the door for me to have God's power manifested. It's bringing me closer to God's grace. It's bringing me under the power of Christ. Okay, so he's now looking at when I have a weakness, this is an opportunity for God to show his strength. All right. And he's not saying, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to be weak. He's saying when I'm in situations that I can't fix and I've got problems that I can't solve, what an opportunity to have God's power rest on me. What an opportunity to have God's power manifested in my life. So he got to a point where he'd actually rejoice in these types of situations because he realized that it was keeping him close to Christ and keeping Christ's power up on him. Second Corinthians 4, 7, he says, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Um, and I've put here that we would be hidden behind God's strength and not kind of be standing in our own strength, that the excellency of God's power will be manifested in us for his glory. I always use the example of, 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 of a drink. When you have a good drink of anything that's refreshing, you don't praise the cup, right? You don't drink a drink and say, what a nice cup. <laughs> and so, you know, he's saying that we are, we are earthen vessels, we're clay vessels, and within these clay vessels, we have this supernatural treasure. You know, the, the, the excellency, the power cannot be of us because we are but clay, we are but, we're but dust. We want to be in a position when people experience us and the power of God operating in us, that they will truly give glory to God, that we would not live in a way that attracts glory to ourselves. We would not, we would not try to boast. I think once I God forbid that I should boast, saving the cross of Christ my God. We have a treasure inside these earthen vessels. What an investment God has made in us to give us something supernatural and divine and put it in a clay pot. You know, the, the more you look at different translations with this is the more humorous it becomes. You know, we have this treasure, one says, in a clay pot. <laughs> All right, we have something so precious in clay. Um, so we want, we want the excellency of God's power. We want, we want God to be seen. We want his power to be manifested. Um, moving on to the next one, and I'll tie them together at the end. Paul speaking of the experience of prayer. And this is an encouragement to us as we pray to allow the spirit of God to pray to us and to expect the spirit of God to intervene, give him space to intervene and to take over our prayers. He says the spirit helps our infirmities again. So where we're weak, he says, for we don't know what we should pray for. So sometimes we're weak in our knowledge or weak in our understanding. We don't know what's going on all the time. We don't always know what kind of attacks have been released. The spirit of God does though. And so he will, he will often help us to pray. The spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Praise the Lord. And I've put here that the Holy Spirit would take over our prayer and that we would be aided to lament for the things that are breaking and it should be the heart of God. Things that are breaking God's heart. We want to, the Spirit of God to help us to pray the things that matter to Him. You know, praying in the Spirit is praying the things that God's concerned about. Praying with the knowledge is praying with the things that you know about, the things that you understand. And that's your responsibility. But we also have to stay in the place and pray long enough for the Spirit of God to take our prayer over and take it into depths of places that we didn't even know that we needed to go. Praise the Lord. And so we must not only pray um, given time for our own requests. You know, when we have more private time, we need to give the Spirit of God time to pray through us, give Him time to have His way. I had an experience a few days ago um, where the Lord gave me a dream. And I knew it was a godly dream. But I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like some of what I was seeing in the dream. Um, and I didn't want to go in and press into to understand it even more. Sometimes you get the full understanding in your sleep. And, and for me, sometimes I have to wake up and write it out, as the Lord says, for me to do it. And as I write it, he gives me understanding. And I avoided the dream for two days. And the Lord kicked me out of bed 5 a.m. yesterday. <laughs> he just woke me up and says, go back to this dream and write it out. And as I begin to write it out, he began to give me the understanding. And I was running from this dream unnecessarily because I, I saw some things that I thought meant something and it didn't mean that. 
but we need the spirit to help us. Like we need to take time out for God to instruct us. We need to take time out for him to correct what's wrong in us and to lead us into avenues that we would have never have gone. If we get up and just pray the things that we want to pray for every day, then maybe we're praying our will and not necessarily the will of God. So time must be made, I'm not just talking about this time, but when we are in our private time and we can set some time aside, not just for the prayers that I want to pray, but Lord, take this prayer where you want it to go. There needs to be time where we say, Lord, have your way in this hour. I'm giving you this hour and, and I'm giving you this evening. I'm stopping this evening early for you to just take my evening over. And you might want to take me from prayer into worship or from worship into a Bible study. Oh, for us to just take time for the Lord to pour into us what he wants to say, and what he wants to do. And finally, the psalmist exclaims, you know, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. And I've put that we should um, make room for God to arise. Okay. Live life in a way that will allow him to be credited. Um, and that also we would testify and live in a manner that says that we depend upon God. If we want God to arise, we have to give him the space to do so. In all of these instances, saints, we're, we're seeing here the intervention of God in our lives, intervention in our prayer, right? He's the treasure in us, in the earthen vessel that, that gives victory. He's the one that works miracles. He's the one that prophesies. He's the one that heals. You know, we think we love people, but really it's Christ in us really loving people. It's the love of God shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It's him loving. If, we, if he's not in us loving, we can't really love people. Um, not the way that he loves. We love the stranger. Sometimes we pray till the heart breaks, praying for people we've never met. That's God's love. That's where we want to be, where his spirit is in us and he's breaking us in the prayer. And we're, we're, not, we're not praying anymore in, in self, but we are lamenting in the spirit. Um, I was speaking with funny a, a colleague yesterday at work. He's a director who... Um, we discovered each other. He saw me post something on LinkedIn and realized I was a believer. And actually he wanted to come on, but he's, he lives in three hours time difference from this time. He can't get up. But he was speaking to me about the spirit of um, lament and the lamenting prayer and how this is important in this season, especially when we are seeing injustices upon the land, that we, we have a lament in our spirit for injustice. There should be something in us that breaks when we see injustice, whether it's perpetrated against black folks, white folks, Jew, it doesn't matter who. Um, even if you're seeing uh, homosexuals persecuted, it, nobody wants to see people battered and beaten in the streets. Uh, this, is, this is not the heart of God. He takes no pleasure in these things and neither should we. We need the heart of God to really cause us to see situations as he sees them while we pray. And as that happens, we get broken. As that happens, we lament. As that happens, the Spirit of God, amen, begins to groan within us. May he take us to those places. And may we allow him to arise, saints. May we give him the place to, to rise up within us. Give him the place in church, amen, as we praise him. He, he arises in praises. He arises in worship. He arises in these moments when we just open our spirits to him. Let God arise. Let God intervene and expect him not you know, when you're not expecting a visitor, you don't make preparation for them. You know, when you know someone's coming, you make preparation. And so I'm, I'm trying to encourage us to have the mindset that God's going to take this prayer over. God's going to take this time of worship over. We're worshiping not with an intention to sing the song three times and four times. And, you know, and then once we've done it, we're going to just stop. We worship with an expectation for Christ to come. We pray with an expectation for him to carry the prayer and to take it over. Let's, let's have this mindset that the Lord comes. He comes to those expecting. He comes to those who are waiting. Be encouraged today. Just end this recording. Praise God. Thank you.